everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be talking about my January audiobook scene. Let's get going. So I feel like I've read quite a lot in January with the audiobooks. So, so my first one was As Old As Time by Liz Braswell. And this is where one of Belle's mom was the enchantress and one of she, Belle's mother cursed the beast and things unfold. So, my, um, I gave it 3 stars, I thought it was okay, uh, nothing really special happened. I did really like the love story between Marvis and Enchantress, I thought that was really well done. Mm -hmm. Like the how the author did with the Enchantress was really well done too. I liked where the direction of, of the Enchantress was going, uh, but it was gruesome to read about it, so... Yeah, and so be careful if you want to read it. Also, the memorable and iconic parts that were similar to the original Beauty and the Beast retail. I didn't really feel that this book in particular wasn't really a unique. It was kind of copy and paste for most scenes of the book, so that was kind of a downer. I could still feel the romance between Beast and Belle, so I thought that was cute. And like the ending was okay, but the book, I feel like the book can definitely be a sequel if the author chooses. I also liked how, like the part with the asylum part, I feel like she could have done more to it. But otherwise, I still thought it was really well done. Otherwise, even though I did give it a three stars, it was slightly predict predictable, but um, yeah, so it, so it was a bad book. The next one was Made in Korea by Sarah Zook, and we're following Val, who has been in charge of a business, which is like a very popular, successful K-pop beauty, and with her cousin Charlie. So she does have a goal in mind, and she nobody wants to be in her way, being the only K-pop beauty business at her school. Everything was going well until this is one guy who also. His name is Wes, and he started to have his own K-pop beauty, but Val doesn't take that lightly, so and they both make a bet as to whoever makes the most money by the end of the school year uh, has to take all the losers' money. It's an all or nothing, and thus the competition begins. So I gave it a three, four and a half stars. I thought it was nice. Um, the book wasn't that bad. Like there was some moments that were cute. Uh, but most of the drama was, isn't really necessary. The miscommunication excuse was honestly like really, really stupid between Charlie and Pauline. That could have been totally avoided had they only talked in all those years, but they didn't. So I wasn't really expecting anything big from drama between the two. And it was just really so dumb. Like, I'm sorry, like miscommunication was really so dumb. And that was the reason why those two didn't see eye to eye. Val, Val annoyed me so much. I thought she was okay, but then she's just starting to be arrogant and I just didn't really like her at all. Um, especially when she got attacked so much simply because she started a business. It's like she only can do business and no one else can. Oh my god. But, um, yeah. So, I didn't really like Val. I also don't like how she treated Wes as well, just because he also started his own K-pop business. Uh, so like she honestly didn't deserve him. I did like Wes, but he is a bit too nice, so people are definitely gonna take advantage of that, which I didn't like. Uh, and also Wes had more of a better reason to start his business than well, but that's how just how I feel. You know, because he wanted a music career for Wes, so I feel like Wes had more better reason. Um, but but Val's grandma, I really like Val's grandma. I thought she's the best character of this book. So I feel like Val and her grandma also really has like a nice relationship as well. So, this book wasn't that bad, I just didn't really like the drama, that was miscommunication, I thought there could have been a better reason, but I guess that's what it is. 
My next book is the one by Intizar Kahanani. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. So this is actually one of the fairy tales of Ghost Girl. It's a retail of her dad. And I'll find Princess Olivia, who is a kind girl from a small kingdom. She grows up in a cruel family, fearing that her brother might hurt her every day, and a mother who does not love her. Action Prince Kirsten. A stranger from another kingdom might be her saving grace to get out of there. However, her brother plants seeds of doubts that this new prince will be just as bad. So I actually never read Ghost School, so I don't know too much about it. I just picked this up because I thought it sounded interesting. I gave it a 3 stars. It wasn't bad. It was really interesting. Um, I never found it really hard to be invested in this book since I wasn't really really known about this book so I, so I can't really get into the story properly. And regardless, I think the story did start out strong until it felt flat nearly towards halfway of the book. Things were starting to get dragged a little and then it really seemed to be picked up. I did like Olivia. I thought she was like really like a really good character and I liked how neatly her arc was wrapped up. I thought that was nicely done. And then it had like any messy arc or any loose ends, so I thought that was like a really nice well done. Um, there was also a lot of times where I didn't really understand why it happened like killing a horse. I didn't quite understand as to why, I almost felt it was random. But I could be wrong and maybe there's something like an actual meaning behind it, but I just kind of figured out what it was. Um, and like the dead horse talking. I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, so that kind of weirded me out. Like, why is he talking? So, I really like the writing a lot. Oh, uh, and also one thing was that how the chambermaid, um, has stolen her identity, but she didn't, and how the princess didn't tell anybody ab about the chambermaid who has stolen her identity. So I thought, why, like, why did she not tell anyone about that? Um, also, I feel like the writing was a little bit stiff. It didn't really have a natural flow to it. And I like the timeline of the story. I found it confusing. Sometimes I was lost. I didn't really quite grasp as to what was happening. And, that, and like, because there were like certain jumps from here scene to another and then another and so on. There wasn't, it didn't really flow that well, so I was kind of confused about that. Uh, I didn't really like Velka. I thought she was terrible. I just didn't really want her anymore in the book. So I'm like, okay, why can't she disappear? So anyways, um, I thought it was just okay. So of course I probably but of course, if I had read Ghost School, I might have understood the story more, but I never read it, so... It wasn't bad. I thought it was great. But, um, yeah. The next one was Sing Me Forgotten by Jessica S. Olsen. And this is a gender stitch phantom of the awful woman following a monstrous school who has been hiding behind the shadows and was born marks on her face. And she used the power that is connected to the enchanting magic of her music. And with that power, she can also extract memories and and she falls in, in love with a boy who, right, who is wearing a pendant, singing like an angel in the middle of the corrupt kingdom and growing threat of political angst. <laughs> and so, I, so this is a three stars. I do love Phantom of the Opera, so that's why I'm excited to read this because it was a retail of Phantom of the Opera. Um, it wasn't bad. So it did have like an interesting read. I thought the whole extracting memories was cool. But I didn't really like how the, how Easter was extracting memories from the guy without his permission. So like she totally invaded her, his privacy and just that I just didn't feel okay with it. But like I did like is that character? I thought she was complicated, and, and I think that had a nice touch to her character because of what she is. And there was definitely some references to the original Phantom of 
that I'm off the offer like the chandelier so I was really excited to see that scene I really did like the romance between Isa and the boy and Enetic, I think that was the name is Enetic and then Eric and Christine as much as I don't like to say that but I feel like Isa and Enetic had more of a romance than the original Eric and Christine but they're like but there were some cheesy and cringy words in the box, so that kind of made me question everything. But like, you know, when, oh, you look like the angel of music, I'm like, oh my god, why? So it took a while for me to understand like what the Gravios and Fen was, to know what they are. Um, I was confused as to what they are, so that's on me, I guess, but I feel like the world building felt a little flat, so I they had more time to build up the world building. And another one was that the, the like there was this group of organization organization of people who were who once again grab was rights, but that kinda was just brushed aside because it was only mentioned towards the end of the book. I wish it was as mentioned to us earlier. Uh, because like and to me, it didn't really feel like anything plot relevant. It was just randomly added there. So I wish it had more time from up the book. But um, I thought Insta wasn't really the villain. She only became the villain because the people made her to be a villain. So, you know, because that's how the world saw her as well, so she became one. So I do feel really sad for Ilza. She just wanted to be understood regardless of how she looked. But um, yeah, so that was okay. I did still enjoy the story of it, but I wish it could have been more. But um, yeah. And that's all my January audiobooks that I had read. Let me know what audiobooks you have read. And please comment, like, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!